Hello and welcome everyone to MLS Matters hosted by CMLS. We appreciate you taking your time again today to be part of our community, part of the conversation, and most importantly, part of the solution. Today's session is being recorded and it will be posted to the CMLS's uh, resource page along with summary notes of the conversations that we have. You will also find all the previously recorded conversations and webinars from the last few weeks and along with those summary notes as well. We are using Zoom meetings, and so everyone that comes in is able to speak because that's what we want uh, to have happen. But please make sure if you're not speaking that you do put it on mute um, so that we don't get to hear all the fun that you're having <laughs> at your new work from home environment. Or maybe we want to, I don't know. Uh, but uh, just also note that as using Zoom, we have enacted all security protocols that have been recommended. So with that, um, my name is Danae Evans. I'm the CEO of the Council of Multiple Listing Services and uh, wanted to share with you, we just announced this week that we have, a we have selected a date for our Brings It to the Table event. We were originally scheduled for May 12th and with all the changes, we are now going to do it on Thursday, May 21st. It will be from 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern time and um, all of those of you who are already registered, you'll be receiving an email shortly about how all that is changing. You'll already be registered. And we're also going to open it back up to anybody who would now like to join us that maybe wasn't traveling before and we would love to have you. Same great content. We'll just be looking at delivering it in a slightly different fashion. So thank you uh, for those that are already signed up and please, uh, we hope you can bring some more individuals from your organizations and uh, share it with your colleagues that we, we want more people part of the conversation. So with that, uh, and I think the registration is gonna open up a little later today. So uh, from there, today's conversation, today's topic is going to be, um, what are the portals doing to help facilitate home search during our current situation? And so um, first I'd like to start by thanking the panelists for joining me today. I think we've got a pretty great lineup of people uh, ready to talk about this and share what their organizations are doing. And part of what we asked them to talk about today is not only what their organizations are, what we want to do is, is how we can better connect what each of the MLSs are doing and how we can make sure that transfer of information and the data sharing between uh, places is happening as smoothly as possible and that we can keep making the market work in this efficient flow. So with that, if I could have um, each of my panelists just do a short introduction of themselves and um, I would say what, if each of you could say, what is the one you think the most important thing your organization has done to meet um, this change in the market. So I didn't give you guys that heads up. So uh, Rhett, since your first bubble on the panel, I'm gonna give that one to you. Um, but just what's the, what's the most important thing that you've done or the most impactful thing you've done? Just quick and brief um, intro in that. Yeah, uh, thanks, Danae. Uh, and great to be with you and thanks for the invitation and, um, and to my fellow panelists, uh, good to be with all of you. You know, um, it's just a, it's a crazy time, right? And um, I think the response that, you know, we've, we've talked about this a lot internally, but the response that um, companies have taken, have to take to protect their employees first. I mean, I've, I've been really impressed with not only um, the quick response uh, that, that, that we took as, as an organization to um, protect employees, number one. And then number two, the, the immediate shift that we were able to do um, to get, I mean, we literally went from a, once it was a required work from home policy, we, we shifted to, to that within a matter of days. I mean, kind of over a weekend, as I know we all have done. And um, you, really, you really get a sense of, um, you know, just your people. Um, and how we're all going through something that we've never seen before. So I'm really proud of that. Um, and I'm proud of my colleagues and, and realtors and MLS organizations that are all doing the same thing. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's scary. Um, it's very different. Um, and we're all, we're all learning how to respond best to that, which I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're, we're having this panel and this discussion because I'm sure I'll learn from all of you as well. So, um, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I would say. 
I think I would agree, uh, Rhett, what I've heard is just how quickly we've all come together. Like everyone's just mm -hmm. rallying and just like how to better collaborate, I guess, as, as, as cheesy as that sometimes sounds, it's just been pretty impressive to see, so. Yeah, and, and, uh, how, that, and how that collaboration is different. And in many ways, it's, it's, it's better, it's richer. Um, yeah, it's more authentic, it, it's much more personal, but it's also still in a very scary time, so yeah. Um, yeah. All right, Errol, your bubble is next. Okay. Hi. Good morning. It's uh, great to see so many people in the Hollywood squares here on my screen. I miss, I miss seeing a lot of you guys. Um, I think similar to what, what Reddit said, um, you know, our, our first priority was and is the, the safety and the health of our employees, of our partners. Uh, Seattle was one of the cities hit early um, with, this, with this pandemic. And so we, we went to work from home um, at the beginning of March. Um, and We've been impressed with with how um, our employees have been able to juggle, you know, having the kids at home and still trying to be productive and 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 you know take care of their their personal responsibilities. Um, it's it's been super impressive, and, and the same with our partners. Um, I've been really impressed with sort of just the spirit and the the creativity of agents uh, in the field. Um, and you know, so one of the things in addition to safety and and, and health and you know mental health as well. The other thing that we're really focused on is how can we um, continue to help consumers who need to move, even in this difficult time, uh, and how do we help agents uh, help those consumers, but do it in a way that's safe and uh, do it in a way that's maybe different from what they've done before, but uh, still getting those deals done. And incredibly, you know, when this thing first hit, I think a number of us, I, I certainly thought that, that it might be like an engine without any oil, the whole market just might seize up. Um, and freeze. Uh, certainly that was the case in parts of China. Um, and we haven't seen that. Uh, it's incredible actually to see the fact that through the creativity of agents, you know, deals are still getting done, albeit differently. So um, we're happy that everyone's so far is doing well, staying safe and, and, um, and business is continuing differently, but it's continuing. Love that. There's the innovation happening rapidly. And then also I, the other thing I keep hearing is just the efficiency of of people, how they're just efficiency from working from home. Sometimes that can be challenging. So I, I, that's a continued theme I'm hearing. Um, uh, okay, next guy, let's hear uh, your, tell us uh, what you're seeing uh, and biggest change you guys have done or what you're most impressed by. Sure. Um, well, first, I'm glad I'm not wearing the same shirt from my little photo there. It was a close call, but uh, I'm little, <laughs> te technically it's a different shirt. Um, uh, so, you know, I mean, I echo what everybody else has said about the team. I mean, I think it's been, you know, that's a pretty massive change. We, like literally we have, everybody works in our office. We don't have many remote workers generally. And so having everybody, uh, you know, stay productive despite all their demands at home is, has been really inspiring. Um, you know, on the, on the, uh, question about what have we done for, you know, for others, um, you know, we're a little different in that one of our primary users are agents themselves through home snap pro. And so we've really tried hard to work with agents and communicate with them and give them, you know, especially as we work out best practices and then try to communicate those. And some of those are things that they can do inside our app. And some of those are things that don't have anything to do with our app. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of those as we get going, that whether that's, you know, utilizing coming soon, whether that's utilizing, you know, virtual tours uh, better or, um, you know, virtual open houses that we'll get to as well. So, you know, that's really been a lot of our focus is trying to be uh, really communicative with, uh, with, especially with agents and try and think on their behalf, uh, both in the short term, what are things that they can change today to try and, you know, to some degree to try and stay afloat, right, for certain agents and for other agents to try and, um, you know, keep going and plan for the future and plant seeds for the future. Um, you know, one interesting little example is, um, you know, we run a lot of digital marketing for uh, agents. And so very early on, we noticed uh, some real trend differences between the digital, uh, digital advertising um, uh, marketplaces. So for example, we, uh, we noticed that, that uh, use of Facebook, these, these seem intuitive in hindsight, but at the time it's, it's hard to tell. Um, Facebook, for example, usage was going up, you know, 50 to 75 to 100%. Uh, on a daily basis while the number of ads in Facebook was going down. So the, the bidding was all changing. And so we were able to try and reconfigure, whereas other platforms, you know, Google wasn't seeing that at the beginning because people weren't Googling for, you know, home related keywords as much as they were just looking at Facebook more from being at home. 
And so we tried to help agents, you know, uh, rearrange under the covers, rearrange where their, where their marketing dollars are spent to get more for their money and essentially try to plant seeds for the future. So those are the kind of things we try and do in, in uh, you know, looking out for them and trying to think, uh, think ahead on their behalf. Great. Um, and Andy, I'm going to ask you, um, I just saw something last night, um, and I think it was past my bedtime when I saw it, so <laughs> forgive me, but with, with Holmes and some uh, announcements, so I'm going to ask you just to jump into um, one of the first questions I had is, how are you guys displaying um, virtual marketing and what some of the changes that you've made there uh, at homes.com? And um, I'm guessing that somewhere in there is going to be your answer of some of the, the stuff you're That's excited that the changes are made. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's just really come out of a conversation with our partners and our customers, right? We didn't have a pandemic emergency plan to go off of, right? We have hurricane emergency plans and earthquake emergency plans, and somehow we missed the uh, stay at home pandemic emergency plan. But, you know, we, we quickly jumped into just having conversations and engaging with both our MLS partners and our agent and broker customers, as well as we've been doing a lot of surveys of consumers, just trying to get a feel for what are people looking for right now. And I think what you're referencing is, it might've been a tweet you saw last night from uh, Flex MLS, where we launched our virtual open house feature. And that's data, not just from Flex, but from all the major MLS vendors. And everyone's really stepped up and collaborated, both MLS vendors and MLSs and portals like us and the other gentlemen on the panel. Um, yesterday, we released our, our virtual open house. We're, we're not sure yet, yet whether it's going to be live streaming open houses. Right now, we're calling them virtual open houses. There's been some conversation about uh, amongst the RESO community that maybe live stream open house is a better term. Um, but that's all come out of really quick conversations. You know, jumping on, our, our, like these guys, our first couple weeks in responding to this was really making sure that our employees were safe and healthy and up and running remotely. Um, that's been an ongoing process. In fact, right now there's a virtual yoga session going on with all of homes.com. So probably no one's watching me. They're probably all on that. But um, so it's, it's been an ongoing process of just engaging with our MLS partners, uh, talking to agents, just figuring out what people need, right? And we have 112 MLS feeds now providing us virtual open house data. So it's all happened really quickly. That was not even something that my mind had never even gone there before uh, we, we entered this five weeks ago. So it's all happened really quickly. I think virtual yoga is about my speed, by the way. Yeah, we could do some poses here. We will do that in a future session for MLS Matters. <laughs> um, Errol, I saw, um, I think early on there was, there was an email that I had seen where um, one of the solutions being putting the URL in the public comments. So you talk a little bit about how that happens quickly, how that's evolved and um, where that's sitting now. Cause I think most people are sort of using that right now, but um, how did that happen? And, and what are we doing about it right now? Uh, Danae, as, as would happen, my internet froze for a second there. I missed the first part of your question. What were, what were we talking about? The putting the links, um, the links to the URLs. Oh, yes. For those it. in there. And it was an early email I saw. So, yeah. and let me know if I'm freezing. I think my youngest one just got up and probably got on the internet. <laughs> so, Netflix. work from home issues. <laughs> I have the same thing happening upstairs right now. They're watching a movie. Yeah. Um, so, it might be on my side. Okay. Um, so, we, we, we added the ability to uh, a few weeks ago to uh, have virtual open houses. Uh, and we could display those one of two ways. Obviously, MLSs are starting to put them in their data feeds, which is great. Uh, but we knew that would take some time to get the engineering work done. So we created a format where if an agent in the remarks, the public comments section, puts information in a particular format, we can actually pull that data out of the remarks and then put it as a virtual open house along with the time uh, prominently on the listing. And so um, I won't get into the exact, it's pretty straightforward. I won't get into the exact sequence of characters right now, but if anybody would like to let their agents know that they can do this while they're working on getting virtual open houses in the feed, um, call your realtor.com rep and they can, they can give you the format, but it's been great. We've seen a huge uptick um, in virtual open houses, in um, 3D home tours. Uh, literally uh, in, the, in the last week of March, the number of sort of virtual walkthroughs uh, loaded to the site uh, grew by 500%. 
uh, for resale homes and over 2000% for multifamily rentals. So really rapid adoption of sort of new ways to get consumers safely uh, virtually into homes. Uh, Rhett, how has uh, Realtor.com handled it? What, has, what have you seen as activity? Um, give me some insight there. Yeah, so uh, we, you know, we're responding to, to, to lots of requests um, in the early, early stages of, you know, allowing links and comments. You know, for a long time, a lot of the, the large portals, you know, had kind of been stripping those out. Um, and we, we chose to take the path to, to continue to do that because there's a lot of, um, you know, links in those comments um, that aren't, you know, aren't really related to a tour or uh, an open house or a live stream. So um, we quickly worked, got to work on developing a, a product, um, which we call live stream open houses. It's, it's launched, it launched officially last week. Um, but what we did prior to that, because we knew that we had a lot of data, just virtual tour data um, around, you know, touring properties. They weren't live stream open houses, but they were really good ways to experience a property, you know, virtually. And so we, the first thing we did was, well, actually stepping back, the first thing I think we all had to do was we were getting calls saying, hey, we're taking our open houses down. Like, like we decided like no more open houses coming to the feed. So we've turned them off. And we also had to quickly, like if agents had gone in and entered in manually some of their own data, we had to quickly go and turn that off. Um, so that, that was a, a, you know, a fire drill, frankly. And then we're tracking all this. And the other thing I think for all of us that was confusing is, um, you know, there was no national response, right? It was all state by state, what's essential, what's not essential. Do we display open houses in a state where, you know, it's shut down statewide? Is that a prudent thing to do? Um, you know, so lots of, lots of trying to collect information and, and determine how best to respond and frankly, how to keep people safe. I mean, you know, um, including our you know, consumers and agents. So, um, but as we were looking at then how, what we can do quickly, it was with virtual um, kind of 3D tours and, and virtual tours, which we had already, of course, but we um, were really proud of the, the product and development teams to uh, within a very short period of time, um, take, make those more um, interactive and more available in search results. So very quickly when you see properties that may have had virtual tour assets, we highlighted that uh, in a fashion that we hadn't before because it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't at the time as critical or didn't have as much um, significance. So that happened quickly. Then we uh, began working with MLSs on finding out who was going to be able to support uh, additional fields and data for a, a virtual open house, which was kind of the default that everyone was calling it. We have since branded ours, you know, live stream open house. Um, and then tracking that, um, and so we've net now mapped hundreds and hundreds of MLSs um, that have added that field and, and working with vendors as well. Um, and we've deployed that. So that's working really well. And, and then, you know, we've also, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things we've done, in, in, and I'm sure we all have, um, uh, developing um, content and pages around COVID um, and both for consumers and for professionals. We've launched realtor.com slash COVID hyphen 19. Um, with a lot of information for both consumers about how to interact with an open house and what to expect and, and regulations as far as we could best determine at a state level and a local level. And then also um, we added an announcement on every open house just to be sure to check your guidelines because it varies. Um, and then uh, we have a lot of rich content for agents and professionals from that link um, about you know, how to conduct one and how to learn, you know, what to expect and, and, and things like that. So uh, again, tremendous amounts of work <laughs> that we're all doing in a very, very different world with a lot of unknowns. And yet we're all very, again, uh, I have such respect for the industry and, and my colleagues and, and the professionals because we're all being very uh, creative and I think very smart and very, very thoughtful about how, how to respond, how to keep people safe and how to keep things going. 
So I have a couple of questions coming in here. Um, and I'm going to hold up on those for just one second because I want to give um, Guy just a second to share. I think you did share some of the things that you guys were doing in your opening remarks, but if there's anything else you wanted to add as to what HomeSnap is doing to capture those. Sure. Just want to make sure. sure. Yeah. So um, one of the first things that we did is highlight a feature that already existed just because it didn't require any new work to, to start using it more and which was uh, uh, HomeSnap stories. So agents can on their phone make a story a la Instagram or um, you know, Twitter or other other platforms support it uh, about their listing and that goes into HomeSnap and the app and the site and can be seen by other agents and their clients and just the general uh, the general public and so uh, we started talking more about that and drawing attention to it and agents uh, you know within a week started using that five to ten times more than they had previously so that became a very quick way for agents to add multimedia content to their uh, to their listings. Um, the second thing we did is um, similar to what everybody else is talking about. We started hearing about these, you know, virtual open houses and this, this concept. And we started talking to our MLS partners and to uh, some of the MLS systems. Um, one way you know that this is a, a, a big movement is that I think most of the major MLS systems providers uh, did stuff within a matter of weeks, which is uh, not the time scale that they are used to acting on. I don't think that's a, a stretch to say. Um, so the fact that they were able to, you know, start uh, creating the, this new resource inside of their data, um, we worked to integrate that into our platform. And so we do things. So when we get a virtual open house, um, we can we, you know, have a different pin on the map uh, when that when it's uh, when it's live. We have a, an animation that comes onto it on the listing page itself. We have a set of media across the top of the listing. Um, we uh, you know highlight it there and again animate it when it's live. Um, and call it out differently. We add the remarks, um, similar to what Errol described. We can pull URLs out and try to try to source them from other locations. But increasingly, they're in the feeds now, and so we're lighting up new feeds as those come out from different from the different vendors. Um, you know, one of the things, and maybe we can get to this. Uh, one of the things that I think it's important for the industry to to work out with this is that, you know, early on and even still today, most of the URLs that we're getting are not somebody setting up a Facebook Live event, right? Which is, which is kind of the impression that is given by the whole uh, idea here. Um, they are people repurposing their virtual tour URL that is already on all of these sites as a virtual tour. Um, they maybe are, maybe it's their Matterport link, maybe it's just a slideshow of literally the pictures that are on all of our sites at the time that you're, that you're looking at it. So we would see things, for example, like as we started to look at it and see like, well, what's the data look like? We would see, you know, 23 and a half hour uh, open houses where th that was literally the longest amount of time that their, the system would let them say. And then they would have one on Saturday and Sunday and Monday, all of them linking off to the virtual tour URL. And yet, you know, the system could be fooled into thinking like, oh, wow, look, exciting live open house here right now. And so I think that is something that the MLSs need to be careful of or this entire system could um, kind of be co-opted by, you know, cruft, basically. We need to collectively figure out how we're going to, how we're going to police that. And define that. So I think I had written down two things. Um, one, I just want to make sure and reiterate why, why I think this is so important. And, and I think we'll get to this in a little bit, but just as this is a new behavior, as this stays, we don't know how long this will be here, but making sure that this activity stays within the MLS so that if agents are loading up these virtual tours, um, these live open houses, that this exchange still is happening within the MLS and they're not getting a new behavior to go look on Instagram or Facebook in which to find these things. So I want us all to kind of be thinking about that as it stays within our ecosystem. Yeah. And, um, and that, that's how, that's what we're describing. We're all talking about feeding off of these MLS feeds and right. you know, the, vendors have, the vendors have caught up to this pretty quickly, to be fair. Right. Um, and, and you could go from Errol's kind of hacky, you know, early implementation, which, you know, good. That's all there was at the very beginning to a more, you know, like normal. Uh, uh, Longer term. Yeah. Something that, that, that's sustainable. Process. But I think that what I was just talking about is an important factor because that's not, you can't really, we either need more agents are going to try and get as much publicity for their listings in an environment like this as anybody will let them get. And the, the fourth time a consumer goes to one of these live open houses and gets a slideshow of pictures, they're going to stop doing it, right? Like fool me once, you know, kind of thing. So I think that is something so, worth talking the, about. 
The next thing I had down was just those definitions. And, and we did talk about that a little bit last, last week. And I think NAR has a sheet that talks about the difference between them. And then this week at Rezo, there was some more definitions. And I believe there was some voting that happening of what we we're going to call them or not call them. So I think there's definitely some work at the national level to um, continue on that um, uh, discussion to where we can sort of circle around what some of those might be called. Uh, any of you have some opinions that you'd like to share on how we describe them or how we use them differently to help shape that discussion? Yeah, I mean, it, virtual tours is already established, right? That's the one to many thing that's been around forever. It's a broadcast feature. We have over 600,000 uh, virtual tours on homes.com. Uh, virtual showing more of kind of a one to one, right? Where uh, it's a more personal feature. That's something that somebody would request. We have a request a, a video showing button on homes.com right now. So you can, a consumer can request that of an agent, typically more of a one-on-one. -on -one. It could become more of a broadcast one-to-many feature if they pre-record it. Uh, but then it sort of crosses the line more into the virtual tour category. And then the last one, the, the newer one that we've been talking about here, live stream open house or virtual open house. Um, you know, I, Quite honestly, I'm, I'm not educated yet on how agents even facilitate these virtual open houses. I was asking our training group this morning, is this something we're gonna you know, get some experts to start training on? Cause I, you know, what do they do? They sit there and wait for someone to ask a question and then start walking around the house answering the question. So that's that the engagement aspect, uh, the practical use of the virtual open house feature. I haven't looked yet. We have 112 feeds live, but I don't know how many open houses there are virtual open houses there are scheduled in the next seven to 30 days so i think the engagement side of that comes next and hopefully many of the mls's that are that are already training on this aspect of it but th those are the three categories that i see errol what do you see as a little bit um longer term for this how would you like to see making sure this data is shared or if you're not using the urls what what's a little bit longer term solution as what you are seeing the behavior might be with both agents and consumers. Yeah. Um, so obviously we would ideally get the, the uh, virtual open house information in the feed. And we're starting to see that in a number of MLS feeds. Um, sticking the URL in the comments was a workaround, but we wanted to get uh, this feature live as fast as we could. Um, I, you know, I think a couple of things are pretty interesting. I think this is going to change the way that people shop for homes in the future. Um, I think you will continue to see these virtual open houses post COVID-19. Um, I think you are going to, I mean, one of the things we're hearing from agents is that consumers in the current environment are being um, very picky. So they might've asked to see 10 homes, you know, in the past, and now they might ask to see just one or two um, because they're, they're cautious, you know, about, about, going to going to visit homes. Um, I think sellers uh, have never particularly liked this idea of people traipsing through their homes and looking in their closets and so on. Uh, and I think uh, sellers will start to understand that maybe there's a different way uh, to, to merchandise and show a home. So I think, I think these virtual open houses um, are here to stay. And I, I, by the way, that that's maybe a good thing. Um, I, the other thing, and it's a bit of a non sequitur, but I just wanted to, to get it out there. Um, is consumers are, home shoppers are back in the market. Um, you know, the number of transactions, if you look at pending home sales are still down year over year, but um, actually traffic is up. So, so what we saw is just after March 11th, um, which is sort of like, you know, that day when the NBA canceled and Trump, you know, stopped all travel from, from Europe and so on. That, March 11th was sort of the day, I think, when everybody, Tom Hanks. If, they if they hadn't noticed already, they, they realized something was up. Um, after that, we, we saw our traffic plummet. So, well, drops precipitously. Maybe it was a better way to put it. We were down almost 20% nationwide. Uh, but in some markets, like, you know, in, in San Francisco, we were down almost 30%. New York, we were down 30%. Um, and that was sort of March through the end of March. But what's really interesting is in now we're middle April, traffic's actually up. We're up 13% versus 2019. So actually more people shopping now than we're shopping this time last year. Um, and, and I think it's maybe a combination of a couple of things. One is I think people who didn't buy in March and weren't shopping in March, you've got that added demand. Uh, maybe it's the, the Netflix uh, 
um, you know, factor you mentioned, you're sitting at home, you're bored, you're, you're looking at real estate listings. Um, but, but there clearly, it seems to be, there's a number of, of metrics, but there, there seems to be an indication that shoppers are coming back. Now, will that translate into sales? Maybe not. There's, you know, tougher mortgage requirements now, but, um, you know, I think, I think there are glimmers of, of optimism out there. Uh, and I just wanted to, to say that because a lot of times I think we, we can get really fixated on the bad news that we're seeing, you know, on Twitter and TV and so on. And, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to be um, naive here. I mean, there's obviously a lot of problems ahead, but at least there are signs that, that the market is continuing. Yeah, um, that was one can of I the work? little conversations before is, is um, taking the data and you can present it a lot of different ways depending on what is your purpose. So making sure we're able to look at it um, from all different perspectives for sure. Um, Andy, I, you were saying something? Yeah, sorry. I was just going to piggyback on what Errol was saying. We're, we're seeing very similar uh, metrics. The first 14 days through March 23rd, there was a 30% decline. So it happened pretty quickly. Um, but already last week, we had page views were up 16% last week over, this, over the same week last year. Overall traffic is still recovering, but the audience is more engaged, right? More page views, an increase in page views and leads year over year. So it's it's maybe a sign, again, not, not to be naive, we, we don't know what's ahead of us, but could be a sign that there's some pent up demand. Maybe buyers are trying to get ahead of the reopening and starting to look more aggressively and ask questions. So um, it's interesting to watch. Well, and also Andy, you know, um, there's such a, a limited number of listings on the market, almost like record lows. Right. Um, so we haven't seen, at least so far, um, significant price decreases. Uh, prices have remained relatively flat. Um, you know, again, we'll see maybe as more listings start coming onto the market, that may change, but um, so far so good. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are tracking new listings uh, yeah. pretty aggressively like we are. We, that's, that's sort of bouncing back too, and that is more uh, market uh, driven, but um, we had, let's see, we had last week, new listings were up 15% week over week. And we're tracking 340 some odd metros, and they were the the percentage there was there was growth of new listings week over week in two thirds of the metros that we're tracking, and some of the bigger biggest increases were areas that entered this a little bit earlier than others, right? So four of the top 20 metros for new listing growth were in Washington. Um, all of those had over 50 percent growth, so that. You know, it's, it's encouraging to see some of these markets bounce back. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure it'll happen in, in different places at different times. Yeah. We, we, so listings are still down versus last year. But it, it, and again, this is sort of preliminary data. But it looks like the worst day was April 17th. So on April 17th, they were down 44% versus last year. And literally every day since April 17th, we're still down, but we're not down as much. The, the numbers are coming back up. And like you, like you said, we're seeing very different numbers in very different metros. So if you go to like Pitt, Pittsburgh or Detroit, you know, listings are still down over 60%. You go to Cincinnati, you go to Minneapolis, they're not quite at normal, but they're almost at normal. So it, it is, the picture varies depending where you go in the country. Rhett, I, I think you were starting to say something there a minute ago. Yeah, yeah I was just going to chime in and, and, and back up. Um, uh, this conversation, same thing. I mean, we're, it, it varies depending on the market. Um, we are, I'm curious about this discussion, Danae, and, and kind of where CMLS lands on this. Um, we're, I get a we're question getting, today. <laughs> yeah, right. We're all, we're all getting these questions. We're, we're getting a lot of comments or, or questions. They're, they're kind of coming at us randomly from different markets about uh, removing days on market, right? Um, we actually publish it as days on realtor.com, um, but in certain markets, you know, there's been like frantic requests and then, you know, I'm in a broker meeting and they, they're, they're desperately asking for you to stop displaying days on market. Um, and it, our position currently and has been is that we're going to continue to display it. Um, there's also request about, well, when it goes into a, a temporary off market status, uh, will you not count those days in your days on market calculation? And right now we do. And we, are, we aren't planning to, to change that. Part of the discussions that we've been having internally is, look, we're, we're all going through the same thing. And what we're all trying to present is honest, quality, 
information about properties online to consumers. And when you start manipulating those kinds of calculations and that kind of information about listings, when we're all going through it and we all know what's happening, um, it, can, it can prove to be a little insincere. So um, I'm curious, Danae, what kind of conversations maybe you, you guys have been having about this? Uh, so a few weeks ago, CMLS actually issued a position that we we're saying, do not, do not yeah. mess with days on market. Um, one of the core values of the MLS is to uh, have a accurate historical tracking of what happened in the market. And, and yes, that is going to reflect what's going on. So um, definitely not changing that. We've even had some conversations last week was talking about, is it even some bigger discussions about how different it's calculated by market, <laughs> you right. know, right. It's like, is that, is that the next conversation that needs to be addressed? Uh, because I think one of the core things is that transparency to the consumer and the value that it brings. Obviously there is the agent, the broker, and we want to support them and be partners. But again, that's, that's the value of the professional in that to translate what that means and to explain that obviously that's what it is. So I understand the wanting to change that, um, but I also think it, it's, it's part of the agent's uh, ability to tell the story. Um, so no changes to days on market. There was a quote, actually, I got to credit Rebecca with this. It was on one of our, um, I think it was on our breakout last week or maybe um, one of the Rezo meetings, but, uh, but MLS is being historians. I mean, it is, uh, it, that's what we do is to help capture that market and the impl implications of that from when we're trying to get those appraisals right now it, of, of what is happening yeah. the rest of the, those all those things play in and a mortgage market impacted because we're not accurately tracking what is happening in the market anymore it has a there's a lot of other things that can happen so um it's, it's hard as it is i understand i understand that but it just I think we, we start messing with the core of the MLS. And yeah, it's I think it stems move. from, I think this stems from, you know, especially in the early days of this, of people wanting to exert some control over an uncontrollable situation, right? Yeah. And, and uh, MLSs are just like everybody else and like, okay, what do we have control of that we can make the world seem better? And I think it was a kind of knee jerk reaction to that, to that idea that in a sense doesn't, you're, you're just deluding yourself, right? It's a, it's a mass delusion. Everybody's going to pretend that this thing is true that isn't true. And it's, it's like everybody knows the situation. And so you might as well not change it since everybody knows. And I think days on market is already one of these things that like, it means something to agents and people inside the community. And it's, it's lost on most, uh, most consu certainly consumers or even clients. The, the difference between how long has this thing been on Realtor, just to take your example, uh, right, right, or, or home snapper Zillow or whatever, like days on Zillow and days on market, right? The fact that there are these little in, ins and outs that it comes on the market and goes, like, I think that's already something that consumers don't get. Consumers don't really think a lot about or understand. And the more you make those things different, the less it will mean anyway. So I think, I think you've landed on the right answer. And, but I just, I just attribute it to that, that like, what can we do that's like that's that, that we're in control of? And that is technically one of the things that we could do. For sure. For sure. And I think we were all feeling that we were feeling that frustration, uh, immediate outreach. And, you know, again, it's that creativity. It's that response. It's that engagement. And then you, we all kind of had to stop and go, is that, a, is that the right thing to do? Um, and I, and I think we all, we all see uh, and I, what's important here. On that, it, it's, it's where there is the data of what is MLS and we're capturing the true accurate story of the data. And then there's the marketing side of it. And so that conversation to me is when those are sort of getting a little mixed up of the two, yeah. there's still the data that is the data yeah. itself. So um, yeah, there, Inman did talk to me about when we issued the statement and there's a story and knock on wood so far, there's no hate mail comments at the bottom of it yeah. towards me that I was expecting. So uh, maybe after uh, this. Back, if, I, if I could, then I back to something real quick. Um, I think it was a question you pitched to Errol about, you know, what does this look like in the future, right? I mean, I, I agree. I think the virtual open house or the live stream open house, as we're calling it, is here to stay. Um, I think it's you know, I think again, it'll, it'll be a good thing, you know, post COVID-19, I think it'll, um, it'll change the way that consumers interact online and, and that agents interact with the, their clients. Um, and I, I think it will ultimately be a good thing. We added a, um, a, 
in addition to like the contact agent feature on realtor.com, we added an, an option to connect via video. You know, so right there from a detail page, they can request to connect via video to an agent. Again, to kind of create that uh, two-way video communication, you know, from a distance, right, virtually. Um, and that's, we're seeing huge success with that feature. Um, and the, the other thing that, you know, when we launched our virtual or our um, live stream open house, we really took a lot of time um, in determining which platforms to support. Um, and right now, you know, we don't support all of them. And currently we don't support Facebook. And a lot of people were kind of like, wait, what? You don't, why wouldn't you support Facebook? Um, but our product teams and our engineers looked at that and, and we wanted to launch with a true live stream option. And Facebook doesn't give you that. It's, a, you know, there's no, there's no two way camera back and back, back, back and forth. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're truly currently supporting the platforms that allow for, you know, a live stream um, context, if you will. Um, and we'll continue to look at those, those options. And I'm sure there will be more um, platforms that we support going forward. Um, but we have said as we launch the product and, and go to on the market with it, that if you have a Facebook stream that you want to, you know, that you want to utilize, you can always add that as a virtual tour. I mean, it can be featured on the listing. We're just not currently going to label it a live stream because it, it really isn't, it doesn't kind of meet that criteria for us. Um, I'm curious to hear from others as to what what they're doing or, or how yeah. they define that. So that's an, an interesting take, actually. I mean, one of the things that we, you know, we, we are, we're we actually working on something that, that specifically does integrate Facebook, right? And we work with Facebook in a number of other ways. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, like video back is great when you know the other person, right? And, and you, like, it's not necessarily great if it's sort of an open-ended thing, Right, not everybody's dressed as fully as all the people on this particular video, you know, uh, video call. Um, Thank you all. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate it too. Um, hey, stop. But but I mean, at least exactly, at least at least as far as we could tell. Um, but one of the big things with Facebook is that it provides a distribution platform that's almost impossible to match, meaning their ability to bring in. Uh, uh, people, consumers, your friends, people that are like your friends, people that have come to your page in the past and get the word out. You know, we've seen uh, the number of people who will come to a Facebook live based um, live stream open house in the several hundreds. And that doesn't exist on these like roll your own, do it yourself kinds of things where you have to track everybody yourself and through these platforms. And part of the reason is, as I said before, everybody's on Facebook. They're just sitting there on their phones looking at stuff all the time. And uh, Facebook does a really good, they make a big deal when people do a live video, right? Like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an event in terms of what's going on inside of Facebook's, you know, brain. So there is, there is a real benefit there, which is bringing this big ass distribution network to, to work for you. That's really hard for even the biggest of us to, to replicate compared to the scale that Facebook has. So um, there was one comment that came in from Rachel um, saying live stream needs to be live and anything else is a virtual. So I think there's definitely back to that, my statement before of just the terms and the definitions, we need to really sort of do some more work and rally the industry around what we're calling it, what we're using fields for and as we're connecting that data to make sure there's some consistency as we move that forward. I mean, to me, an open house is an event. The reason it has times is because it's like a happening, something that's only- not 24 that is, hours, guys. <laughs> 24 hours is not possible, but uh, 23.75 hours apparently is possible. Um, okay. But like, if it's going on between two and three, and it's not going on before that, and it's not going on after that, that could be a, a virtual open house. Or, a, But if it's just there all the time, that's a tour, that's a virtual, we have a thing for that. You know? We have that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's my opinion. Um, well, one, I will tell you from the comments, pretty much everyone is really excited to hear the stats that you guys have. So if nothing else, if you make sure, figure out a way to, to share those with, with our members, that would be excellent because everyone was definitely very excited about that um, and wanting more information on that. So they're um, seeing lots of that. That's excellent. And then um, I think we'll work on some definitions and doing that. So I would just close this out before we go into our uh, breakout rooms. I would ask our panelists if you guys would be interested in staying. We'd love to have you. But any closing thoughts, recommendations, or suggestions about uh, how we continue moving forward or what's most important? What, what do you want to share with everybody before we 
we break into our our the small one the a one area we didn't touch on was trainings and i i just i want to okay. thank all all the all of our mls partners which is pretty much everybody on this call that everybody has stepped up and we've stepped up our cadence of trainings and uh hosted a lot and and kind of co-promoted with mls as we had one earlier this week with stellar mls that had like 600 people registered on a single webinar so thanks to mary joe and her team and did another one with big sky country mls in montana thanks thanks mike if you're on the call so you know that effort the collaborative effort of everybody coming together and helping do trainings on things like you know just ha i mean i can't I, I can't wait to start doing some on how to conduct a virtual open house because that's still kind of confusing to me but uh so thank you to everybody who stepped up and helped us with that yeah um i would follow along with that it's it, aren't we all kind of amazed at the registration numbers we're getting for our webinars now but i keep hearing crazy <laughs> I mean, they're numbers. Just like you know we we've been doing these for years but now these numbers are like huge and they all show up you know we, we see registrations and you're like yeah well you know half will show well they're like a lot are showing up now um and to that point i mean training's huge um it's fa also fun you know i mean so it's, it's a whole new world and um we've got a site it's at hub.realtor.com and that's where we've got a lot of content on training um in all aspects of this not just you know how to you know uh, upload virtual tours or utilize a facebook uh, feed or a link uh, on a listing as well as host a live stream open house but you know just how to host a zoom meeting you know a lot of people think zoom is the tv show from the 70s when i was a kid <laughs> you know they're, they're hearing this word they're like they're they're still learning that one so uh and a lot of folks need to get better at you know and and being more comfortable just being on camera and 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 interacting with consumers and other realtors so um get forced train, for that sure is a big one all right guy yeah, I mean, I guess the, the couple of uh, things I would leave with one, I think that this has exposed a little bit the, you know, how, how antiquated we handle sort of multimedia content in this in this uh, industry, you know, there's still systems that won't let you have a picture over a certain pixel size. I mean, literally, like that's still a thing. Um, and yet, you know, people are sitting at home trying to look at houses, right. And so we collectively need to figure out how to do a much better job on accommodating all of these new ways of creating and distributing content, whether that's uh, 3D tours or live events or whatever. And right now we're kind of trying to jam them into an antiquated, you know, trying to find ways by using URLs and things like that to jam them into an antiquated system. But overall, I think that kind of needs a pretty big rethink as we move into this new world, where as Errol was saying, like people want to do a lot more of their shopping from home and a lot of like, you can shop for a lot of things from home and houses should be one of them but it's still so much like it was 10 years ago in terms of the multimedia content. And so I think that's a big thing that we can all work on over the next couple of years to just change the underpinnings of this thing to support a, a, a much richer ecosystem of uh, providing experiences to, uh, to consumers. And the last thing I'll say to, since everybody's still in one room is, um, you know, I just appreciate everybody's, uh, you know, how much they're trying to move and innovate and keep things going to in this very difficult time for your employees, and for your businesses and you know i know how difficult it is and how stressful it is and uh it's definitely that way for me as well and not to mention you're worried about your own families and your parents and everybody else and so you know i'm uh, very appreciative of everybody on this call and everybody that we work with and how they're all under those pressures and and still trying to do a good job for all of their you know customers and clients and stakeholders and everything else so i you know thank you great thank you um errol last thoughts today yeah. Um, well, first of all, thanks to everyone for, for attending. Uh, it is It has been a good conversation. Uh, I guess I, I'll leave you with two thoughts. Uh, the first is um, just some practical tips. If you go to zillowgroup.com forward slash COVID-19, there's a bunch of resources there for, for buyers and sellers, but also for agents and brokers. So some practical tips, for example, if you're going to do a video walkthrough, actually how to do it. And these are words of advice from some of the partners we have in the industry, agents who are really good at this. Um, there's a link there to a tool called uh, Zillow 3D Home, which is a free app that you can use to create essentially uh, almost like a Google Street View where the consumer can click and sort of walk into the living room, then click and go up the stairs and then click and go into the backyard, that kind of thing. Um, so there's, there's a bunch of resources there, zillowgroup.com forward slash COVID-19. Um, and then maybe a little bit less tactical and, and longer term, um, I do think 
that real estate's not going to be the same when we come out of this. Um, and I think there's an opportunity now that we're sort of used to working from home, we're sort of settling down here. There's an opportunity for us to think, you know, maybe a couple of years into the future and realize that there's a number of things that need to be fixed. Um, whether it's, you know, virtual notaries, uh, you know, removing some of the, the, the arcane old things around mortgages and inspections and appraisals. Um, because I think we're, 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 we're running into those now given the current environment, but really, um, all, all we're doing is sort of uncovering problems that were there already. Warren Buffett has this famous statement that when the tide goes out, you know, who's been swimming naked. Um, well, the tide has gone out and I think we're, we're suddenly recognizing problems that have been there all along, but maybe they need to be fixed. And I think there is an opportunity for us as an industry to maybe fix some of those old archaic um, practices that, that are still with us and, and they don't need to be. So, you know, maybe that is one of the silver linings that comes out of all of this. Maybe we can start to, really make the process end to end easier for consumers. I would, I have been saying that piece of it because we get so much blame in the industry about how inefficient the transaction is, but there's so many parts and pieces to it that don't necessarily sit right within our control. It is the, the notaries, the mortgage sites, all those things. There's so many obstacles there. And so I would say us as an industry, if we can help to identify those and work with any of our partners, communities, elected, whatever it might be to make those things happen rapidly and take advantage of it, that, that is uh, beneficial for us to make the home buying process easier. So um, thank you all very much for participating today. We do have the CMLS resource page up. We have several CMLS members who are contributing what, they've, uh, what they're doing, what they're posting, links to their pages. So you all have one central place to go to. Um, uh, we also have our form. If you've got questions to ask, please log in, start your topics there, get questions and feedback from your members, uh, from your colleagues uh, through the CMLS. And next Friday, what we're going to do, CMLS, uh, one of our A1 priorities is being more active in national MLS policy. We did um, recommend a, we called it the brokered broker data access policy that basically the spirit of it is a, a broker is uh, should be able to get their own data back, their own data. Um, so we did put that forward to the emerging issues group that was sent to our members. Um, and we're asking for more comment period. So you will see that if, uh, we will be sending out a um, email with what we submitted, what the changes or edits were from the emerging issues. And then next Friday, we will be covering that particular policy. You'll see and have opportunities to make comments and get feedback uh, this next week. But that's what our topic will be. And then on May 4th, I'm looking at my big calendar behind me, is when the MLS forum and uh, MLS policy committee meeting will happen. So all of that. Um, thank you all very much for your time. Now we get to go into our roundtable rooms um, where we like to have even, um, it's just the connections, the conversations are so awesome. They are the highlight of my weeks. So with that, if we take just a minute, thank you so much to my panelists, those excellent conversations that I think queued us up well going into uh, the roundtable. So thank you all. Have a safe weekend. Um,